Once we have your database, we can start working on our register and login pages. Let's see how it looks right now. Let's go to our web browser, click on register. We have three fields. We have an email field, one for password, and another for confirming our password. But we need two more fields here. We're going to add a first name and a last name. So let's go to Visual Studio. Let's go to Areas, Identity, Pages, Account. Let's go to Register. Here we have our email, password, and confirm password fields. As you can see, these, all these fields are bound to a view model of input with their respective email, password, and confirm password. So before we can add the two fields for first name and last name, we need to change our input model. So let's go to the back end. Let's go to input model. Here we have our definition for our email, password, and confirm password. So we're going to add two more fields. First one, we're going to call it first name. Let's mark it as required. And we're going to say display name as first name. And then we're going to have a string length. Since we configured it to be 255, we should add this validation. And we're going to confirm, this, rename this to the first name field should have a max minimum of 255 characters. And we can get rid of the last parameter. Awesome. Now let's duplicate the whole field and change it to last name. Last name. And let's update this to last name. And they're all set. So let's go to our HTML page and add these two fields. I'm going to copy this, paste, paste. Let's update this to first name. Copy, paste, and paste, and the autocomplete to first name. Now let's set the same for last name. Last name, copy, paste, paste, last name. Awesome. Now we have successfully added the two fields to our HTML. Now let's build our project and see how our register page looks. Wonderful. Now we have our first name, last name, email, and our password fields. Before we can start registering our user, we gotta modify our backend. Let's take a quick look. So we're gonna quickly hide everything. Let's come to our on post async method. Here we create our user, and this is we where we add our password and the user details through our database. So before we do that, we're going to configure our first name and last name. So we're going to say user dot first name is equal to the input view model here is input dot first name. Same for last name is equal to input dot last name. Awesome. Now let's build and test our project. Let's go to register page refresh first name let's call it mark last name rob I'm gonna call it user one at test.com on the password let's use this password it has a combination of capital and small letters with a symbol now let's click on register and there we go we have successfully registered our user this is a temporary confirmation page. This is usually used to send an email after you sign up. So this is a proxy page for, since we don't have an email sender configured. We will see how to disable it in a few moments. So let's click here to confirm our account. And then let's log in. Let's use our login information, user one on test.com and our password. Let's click on login. And there we go. We are successfully logged in as our user.
Now let's disable the email confirmation feature and try registering another user. So let's quickly log out, go back to Visual Studio. So let's go to program.cs and under our add default identity section, we're going to set the options.signin.required confirmed account. We're going to set that option to false. So this is the option which is used to confirm uh, whether a confirmation email should be sent out for every registration. Once we set that to false, we're going to build the project. Go to back to our browser. Let's click on register. Let's create a new user. Martha, Rob, user2. We're going to use the same password as we used before. Paste, paste, register. Wonderful. This time we got automatically logged in without having to confirm our email. So let's see how the user data looks in our SQL. Let's go to our Microsoft SQL Studio. Let's go to ASP.NET Users. Let's select the data. And here we have it. We have our first name, last name, user, and our hash password, etc. Wonderful. So let's check out our identity features. So let's go to Manage Profile by clicking at the very top, add the username. Here we have a profile section to manage our username and phone number, to manage our email, to reset our password, to do two-factor authentication, and update our personal data. So right now we don't have access or we haven't added these features into our project. Let's go back to Visual Studio. Let's right click on our project. Let's click on add. Let's click on scaffold that item. We're going to go back to identity and add. Let's wait for Visual Studio to do its thinking. And here we go. So we can utilize all these features from the scaffolding. So if you want to do that, let's click on Override all files. Since we already did register and we did some custom updates to the controller, we're going to uncheck this. And our data context class, we're going to choose our current one, application DB context. And then we're going to click on add. We're not going to replace these items. Let's wait for Visual Studio to do its thinking. And there we have it. We have all these extra features and the pages added automatically from our scaffolding. Let's build our project. And it goes through. Thank you so much for watching this video. Please like and subscribe if you can. If not, no problem. If you have any questions or requests about programming, please leave it in the comments section. I'll answer it to the best of my ability. Thank you, and have a great day.